Hey, so today I'm going to be explaining how a wheel collider works in Unity and uh, what, uh, what its function here does in, uh, in the wheel collider. So, let's get started. Uh, so the first thing that's uh, on the wheel collider is basically what the mass of the wheel is, which is this thing here. Uh, I mean, like, that's pretty obvious. I mean, like, every object in the universe has a mass. So uh, the wheel has a mass well, and usually it's used to calculate what the unsprung mass is on a car, but in Unity, it doesn't really affect that much. It just adds weight on the car. So you need to keep that in mind when you set up your rigid body that you have an extra masses that are on the wheel colliders. Next thing is the radius, which uh, obviously is uh, the wheel radius here. So when you have your car, uh, like I have here, uh, your wheels, as you can see, there's this green little line. That's the radius we have said to Unity that our wheel is. So if we increase it, you can see the wheel increases and uh, we, want it, we want it to basically match the mesh we have it on. So for this case, uh, 0.3 is a pretty good value. So uh, next thing that we need to check out is uh, the wheel damping rate. That is uh, how much the spring of the wheel is dampened. So when you have a wheel that's going up and down, uh, you basically have a spring on top of it to, uh, to make it, to make the trans, the trans, uh, the transference of power to be more smooth from the wheel to the car so that when you hit a bump wait i have a wheel here so when the wheel hits a bump like this the car doesn't go up but just the wheel does and uh, the rest is dampened so if you have a high wheel dampening every time you hit a bump basically the damper takes the force and makes it into into heat so uh your uh, car won't feel the bump as well. But if you have a, a value that's way too high, it uh, will basically mean that your spring is useless because it doesn't, it's not a spring anymore, it's just a road that just basically goes slowly up and down. So you need to check that out. Next thing is uh, our suspension distance, which is uh, also pretty obvious. Like. It's the distance between our wheel and the suspension. So you can go here and uh, check this out. So uh, right now it's 0.1, but we can set it to 1. And you can see the wheel becomes really high. So right now only the rear right wheel is 1. And all the other wheels are 0.1. So we can set that to 0.1 again. And yeah, that fixes it. Okay. So, uh, next thing we need to check out is the force applied point distance, which uh, basically means uh, what, where the force is applied from the wheel to the spring. So, uh, if you have a wheel like I have here, as you can see, this is the wheel. This is obviously attached to, uh, let me change the color because that's white. Okay, so the wheel is obviously attached on a spring, something like this, on a car. So uh, the force applied point is uh, where on the car this is applied. Uh, so you can have this higher or lower. Uh, obviously, uh, for the best performance on cars, you want it to have it a bit lower for, than the center of mass. So if the center of mass is right here, you want it to be just a tiny bit lower, like uh, a few centimeters, decimeters. Uh, but uh, you can put it higher or lower. Unity by default just takes the position of the spring of the wheel plus the distance of the spring. And uh, that's the point it uses. But you can change that by using the force applied point distance. 
so uh, let me show you how that works so uh, if you go again to the car you can see this is the wheel here let me take all the wheels so that this doesn't break uh, and if we put this to is minus five which basically means oh wait which basically means that uh, instead of here we put it higher so we put it somewhere here so now this spring would look like this uh, so this would cause the car to act like the spring is higher and as you can see it really doesn't like that because obviously it's uh, it's really way too high so if we put this like 0.1 you can see that the car now acts like the springs are a lot higher than they should be and we can do the exact opposite as well we can put this to one and now the springs would look like the car is on rails and like it doesn't have any suspension at all so you want to find the middle ground for that that's going to be like point uh, minus or point oh oh two or something like that would be the best practice to make the most realistic car you can so next thing in the wheel collider is the suspension spring so it's the spring that's used on the suspension so uh, first thing we have uh, three items we have the spring the damper and the target position uh, so one two three the spring is basically the force that's applied uh, on the wheel uh, so if you remember in physics I'm not sure if I remember it correctly but the force something like k times x which where x is the distance uh, where here k is the spring so yeah <laughs> so it's basically the force that the spring applies to the wheel if that's too low it's gonna the spring is gonna flat out and uh, there will, will be no suspension. If it's too high, then uh, once again, it will not be a spring, but will be basically a rod that doesn't move, and it will be like the wheel is uh, attached to, to the car without any suspension again. Uh, the damper is basically how much force is dampened on every repetition. So every time you the wheel goes up and down, how much force is lost on that. So the higher, the better the damping, but once again, if that's too high, it will not work and the suspension will be awful. Uh, the target position will be, is basically, uh, so if you have this wheel here, that's the suspension, uh, how high or low you want the suspension to be. So if this is the highest point, if there's no force attached to it, and this is the low point of the suspension, so like this, uh, 0.5 is right here. So you want to find where you want the wheel to be. Here, with uh, it, this is where the wheel maxes out, and this is where the wheel has no force. So to simulate uh, the weight of the vehicle, you want to be about 0.5%. So uh, actually, let me show you how that looks on in Unity. So uh, if you go to the uh, game and you uh, just change this from 0 0.5 to 0, you can see that's basically the vehicle being on the starting point, like it has no force on the suspension. And if you put this to one, it will be like the suspension is down, it's uh, all out. So there's no suspension here. Uh, yeah. So uh, the final thing uh, we have in uh, Unity is uh, the forward and sideways friction. So in the universe, every item has a friction force when it, when two objects rub there's friction between them and uh, the simplest way to see this is uh, with uh, this where f is equal to the friction coefficients times the force uh, on the wheel on a normal tire this m can be something like uh, 1.5 to 3 but this doesn't say, tell the whole story because uh, there is this thing where when you have an object, uh, there is a difference between whether it's uh, statically and hasn't started moving yet and if it's slipping. If it's slipping, the force that's being applied is a lot lower than if uh, 
it's not slipping. So as you can see, this is how much force is needed to keep the wheel in, at the same place. But if it starts slipping, that's, it needs a lot less uh, weight. Uh, you can't really see that uh, because you cannot, you cannot obviously feel the wheel, but trust me on this. You, you can actually take uh, something like your phone and uh, try to move it with a little bit of force. You'll see that it requires a bit of force, but if you throw it, it doesn't require like any force at all. It's like in the ice. So that's what we want to simulate here. So to simulate this, uh, we have the sideways and the forward friction. Uh, in Unity, there is this curve, that's the force to slip extremum curve. Uh, so we have uh, <coughs> the force that's being applied times the slip. And uh, so earlier I told you about the F is equal to F times N, but that's not actually the case. Force is actually uh, based on the slip that we have, where slip is how much the wheel is slipping from the from where it's touching. So if the wheel is not slipping at all, we will be somewhere here. If it's slipping a lot, then we will be somewhere here. Whereas the asymptote means the line that's near this, but it doesn't touch. So. Uh, <clears throat> when the wheel is not slipping, we have uh, the force that's uh, going to be zero bit because it's not moving at all. But if it starts moving and uh, it hasn't slipped yet, it will have the maximum amount of force that's going to be applied on the road and, it, uh, and the wheel is going to be pushing the car. Uh, that's going to be our extremum value, extremum value. Uh, so we will have our extremum value and our extremum force. Sorry, our extremum slip and our extremum force. Our extremum slip is this thing here. This is going to be extremum slip. And this here is going to be the extremum force. So in Unity, this uh, translates, uh, if you'll see, there is this thing, these two here, the extreme sleep, the extremum value, the asymptote sleep, and the asymptote value, which uh, translate on these things here. So this is the asymptote sleep again, uh, sleep and value again. And uh, if you want to emulate a normal car, this the extreme should always be the extreme slip should always be lower and the extreme force should be higher than the asymptote ones. Uh, so let's see what uh, each thing does here. Uh, let's try this. Uh, the normal car is going to be, should behave like this from the older tutorials I had uh, done. But uh, if we increase the extreme value of the, f of the forward friction to about five, you can see that the car is not moving as easily, it's not slipping as easily because it has a lot more force uh, used on, on it. So we can actually change the sideways friction as well. So if we put the extreme value to around 10, that's a lot, you'll see that it will never slide. As you can see, the car is not sliding at all now because the force is too high to break. Uh, if we make this 0.5 but increase the slip to 10 you will, or make it maybe 1 to be more easily you can see that it's going to be to take a bigger step of slip before it uh, starts losing the real wheels so to recap on this because that's actually pretty hard to understand we have uh, the forces that are based on how much the wheel is slipping and on a normal race car, you want to have this, this extremum, extremum force as high as possible and uh, to have as broad of a slip range as possible. So if you can make the, the curve look like this, that's going to be great if you're a racer. 
but uh, to make a drift game for example you would want to make uh, this be as small as possible and as close to the asymptote as possible so when the wheel is sliding to have a more uh, predictable sliding because that's unpredictable because when the wheel is loses slip uh, that's going to be become unpredictable because you will not know how much how the car will behave when slipping and then uh, something that I kind of forgot to mention is that there is the forward and the sideways friction that basically means how much the force is when it's going like this this is forward friction and this is sideways friction so if a car is moving like this and it's sliding this is forward friction this is sideways friction yeah and the uh, final thing that uh, exists in the wheel colliders is this thing here that's called uh, the stiffness the stiffness is basically the easiest way to modify how much uh, uh, <clears throat> how much force is going to be applied on the wheel so basically if you want uh, to change the wheel force based on if you're on a grass if you're in glue or in ice you can change this for easier physics so if the stiffness is zero it basically means that there is no friction at all like zero and if it's a hundred obviously it means that there's a huge friction and the car will not slide and you can actually test this out yourself uh, if you make let me change the whole wheels to have the stiffness of zero here you'll see that it doesn't move at all uh, but if i put this as a hundred you can see that it has perfect friction so much that doesn't want to even calculate it so let's put this on three this should act really strangely but we'll see okay so yeah as you can see it's basically not slipping at all or at least it tries not to slip at all you can see it breaks perfectly no slipping and uh, that's the forward friction uh, we can also make the wheels uh, let's make the real wheels uh, have a stiffness of uh, two you will see now that the car will not drift at all because it has a lot of friction force when it turns so you can see it tries to drift but every time it does uh, it kicks back in because uh, the sideways friction is way too much basically in normal physics when you have a wheel uh, when it's rolling when it's going forward the friction is at maximum but when it's going sideways the friction is a bit lower so uh, you need to keep that in mind to have a more realistic game and finally if you put this to point one you'll see that when uh, it's slipping it will have zero control on the car as you can see it will just be doing donuts uh, so yeah that's pretty much it on the wheel colliders thanks for watching and i hope you understood the tutorial